Hey, it's JT uh, Hoagie's Garage here. I uh, have the Impala here. Very dirty, but it is in the garage today. Um, kind of uh, adding a step to the project here. Uh, engine sitting right over there, still getting ready to be put in. I'm waiting on header still, um, but the engine's coming, I promise. Just, you know, life is uh, one of those things that gets in the way of all this kind of stuff. So, but, uh, you know, we're, we're pretty excited about it. It's getting there. It's getting ready to be put under uh, the knife, as they say, and uh, get uh, transplanted here. In my hand here, though, this is a PML uh, rear differential cover for the Impala here. It's their uh, powder-coated black uh, deep rear pan cast uh, made in USA unit. Runs about 200 bucks. And what you get with it, the point of this is obviously if you look and you can kind of see here, I'll sort of hold this up. It's a seriously heavy duty quality piece. You get the fins which add to a little bit of the cooling. The biggest thing though is that you get an extra half quart of capacity in the back of this thing. Which means more fluid, uh, cooler gear temperatures, and that's always a plus. Um, included with it, they give you new bolts. They have to be longer to fit through uh, this cover, which is thicker than the factory uh, cheap stamped unit. They also give you one of the huge, huge benefits of this pan, a magnetic drain plug like you would find on a regular car oil pan. It screws right into the bottom here. And basically it means you can change your dip fluid anytime you feel like. As crazy as you are or as uh, not religious as you are with doing it, this is one of those reasons to uh, put this on here. It'll give you that excuse to come out and change your fluid more, which any of us could do more often. Um, I do have some of the uh, AC Delco Limited Slip uh, Additive. I got two bottles of that because that's what everybody else says online you need. I've got some gear oil. Um, and then sitting here too, highly recommend some Jack Manufacturing Concentrated Magic Hand Cleaner. This is a messy job as you can see. I have kind of uh, older clothes on. I'm not like my normal stuff that I wear in these videos. So uh, definitely be ready for that with Magic Hand Cleaner sitting here. PML gives you full instructions. You do need to buy a uh, new gasket. And one of the interesting things with the Impala gaskets, I've got so many things in my hands here. Um, these do have the notches out, which everybody uh, talks about needing for fluid movement, that sort of thing, because I guess GM didn't include that at some point. So I have the gasket here. PML also says use some Loctite on the bolts. Um, I have some RTV sealer for my gasket, even though it's overkill. So we're going to tear into this here and get it going, kind of walk you through step by step. And um, if you looking for a diff cover this is definitely honestly the one I would buy because it's probably the best one and the heaviest duty of one and it is also made in USA which is awesome so yourcovers.com uh, that's who makes this PML makes this that's their website so follow along as we change this out alright so here we are under the Impala you can see right here the rear diff uh, the axle sway bar spring shocks um, Kind of give you the little run through. This is a brake cable that's kind of attached to one of the top bolts. So uh, it looks like at least where it's got a uh, bracket there. We'll have to see how that goes. Uh, there's a little tag down here. A little uh, label there type thing telling you what the fluid is. It's one of those things you can put back on. I guess you don't have to. This diff has been serviced before. But um, stock cover, as you can see, you know, 1996 here, 180,000 miles. It's showing a little bit of rust, but this car's never really seen more than uh, one or two freak snowstorms. So it's pretty clean underneath, just basically road grime and dirt. Jack stand here, just uh, for safety. I just jacked up on the driver's side. All the bolts uh, seem to be uh, 13 millimeter. So I'm going to go ahead and start breaking those loose here and see what happens.
that's all the bolts removed. Um, some of them trickier than others. Like I said, one of them had this tag. The other one had uh, holding this brake line up top, which should be interesting with our new uh, pan as far as we may have to bend this out of the way a little bit. I did notice that uh, these bottom bolts, you could see them sort of starting to drip here. PML says use Loctite. I think I'm going to seal these bottom bolts here with some RTV because they look like they uh, they go into where the fluid is. So we'll see what uh, that looks like once I get this off. This is the fun part though. We get to kind of pry this off. Um, I do I did start to wheel up my pan here. So uh, I'll sort of uh, start to use a small screwdriver here and see if I can pry this up without beating up the uh, actual housing. I don't really care too much about the cover, but you know, it's nice to, I guess, keep it nice if uh, you're going to reuse it or do whatever with it. You don't want to make a huge mess doing this. You just kind of let it drain here while it's still hanging there. It feels like there's a paper gasket back there, um, which, you know, some people say you can use. Some people make their own gaskets out of RTV. But either way, it's, it seems like it stayed pretty sealed up here for the most part. No major leaks or anything until, obviously, we did this. Fluid's a little dirty, but actually not too, too bad. Still looks kind of that... Uh, brownish color, like light brown. Uh, as you can see, there's the uh, diff gears, everything up in there. Um, there is a factory magnet in this one. It's got some metal shavings a little bit. And like I said, the new PML cover does have a uh, magnetic drain plug, which will be nice. We'll just kind of let this drain for a minute and then uh, start cleaning up here. All right, so what we have here is the differential um, all opened up. Basically, you got to start pulling off all the old gasket, and depending how they stuck it on, which this one is kind of stuck on pretty decent. Um, I have a razor blade here to scrape some of this off. I know somewhere I have the correct tool, but of course, I can't locate it right now. It's almost like a razor blade on a stick or on a screwdriver handle type thing. That definitely would work better right now but I'm stuck with the plain old razor blade so you gotta get this surface totally clean you don't want any uh, residue anything like that this should be I mean even you could hit it up with like some uh, sandpaper not like wood sandpaper but you know like the emery cloth type stuff to sort of uh, get it completely clean and flat um, and that's pretty much it you just want it taken down to nothing this would be so much easier if I had the right tool. There's even a gasket remover, which isn't what it used to be. They've kind of limited the, the effectiveness of it, but it does kind of work. All right, so um, just like the magic of YouTube here, uh, the rear diff is clean. I'm sure if you're doing this at home, you've... Uh, already cussed at the thing and been kind of angry. It is a pain, it really is. One thing I do on these is I take a rag and I shove it inside there uh, to sort of absorb any like leftover fluid, maybe get some extra gunk out, and also too it prevents that fluid from pouring over onto my clean gasket surface here. 
So it's scraped off all the old gasket. I also ran some uh, sandpaper over it um, just to sort of get rid of the rust and that sort of junk. It really, uh, that's something like Valvoline or instant oil changes usually don't do. So you can tell it's kind of uh, never really been perfectly uh, cleaned. So next thing I'm going to do here, I have some uh, gasket maker. I use the gray. I'm going to put a very thin coating on here just to sort of hold the gasket up. You know, a lot of people say this is overkill, which it is. It's not something you have to do with a gasket. I mean, you can use this stuff by itself and you're probably more than likely okay. But I'm just sort of uh, overkill with this stuff. You know, I just kind of uh, sort of apply little bits, especially at the bottom, because that's honestly where if it is going to leak, it you know, it will down there. So just to be sure, I sort of go overkill with this stuff. And I've never really had a problem with that. If you don't do it that way or you don't agree, that's totally fine. I'm sure, you know, there's 20 other methods to doing this. And this this is probably, it seems like a big deal if you don't ever work on cars, but this is probably one of the easiest jobs on a car short of uh, an oil change or even rotating your tires just as long as you do it right. So I'm going to apply this all over put the gasket on and I'm going to start to uh, try to fit the new diff cover. Alright, so still under the car here. It's a favorite place to be, definitely. As you can see, the gasket uh, maker, RTV, whatever you want to call it, is on the axle there. It's just magically holding up the uh, gasket, which is pretty cool. Now if you're really overkill, you could also smear it on the other side. Uh, I'm not going to do that this time. The uh, next move, though, is putting the uh, PML cover up here. And it's going to, I can tell already, sort of hit this guy. I don't know if I can show you. This guy. So um, this might take more than one try to get it perfect. Um, so they say use Loctite on their bolts, but... As we can see, when we took this part, at least the bottom three for sure, I uh, have uh, run into the, the housing here and could potentially leak. So just to be safe, and it kind of does the same thing as a Loctite for the most part, I'm going to put some RTV on all the bolts as I put them in. So here we go. If you're doing this in your gasket moves, make sure you obviously move it back. The one negative of these PML covers, if you want to say it's a negative, is the fact that they are so heavy. I am somewhat struggling to lay here on my side, put this in correctly, and also hold it at the same time so keep that in mind if you're ever doing this they they are I mean I think it weighs double a standard uh, housing it's a big time unit for sure all right so it took a little bit longer than I thought it would main reason because these Allen head bolts aren't the easiest to put on if you have the right tool for the job, which this is not, it go a lot quicker. But it's on there. Sealed, ready to go. I'm going to go overkill on this. Um, I'm pretty tired. I'm going to let it sit all night, kind of solidify, harden, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then it'll be ready for fluid in the morning. So next uh, clip will be uh, after this is sat all night, dried, and it's ready to fill up. So... Until next time. All right, so it is the next day. Um, you know, I kind of ran out of time last night. I had to get to bed, that whole thing. Um, you know, but basically the point of that was uh, it's overkill. But letting your uh, diff cover sit there with the gasket maker, the gasket kind of letting it all sort of like uh, dry 
we know now it shouldn't leak whatsoever. And I wanted to be sure because really, unless there needs to be major service done to the uh, rear diff, that cover is not coming off for a while. Uh, and, you know, with those type of bolts, the Allen head, the quarter inch Allen head bolts, uh, it wasn't exactly easy to put on with in that end of it because, you know, you had to finagle an Allen wrench or a T-handle or something up in there, even if you have socket Allen heads, those are cool too. But even still, uh, sometimes a wrench uh, beats that. So that's, I'll say, my only uh, issue with the cover. It's a very awesome cover, though. It's so cool. Uh, just, you know, obviously looks so much better up there. It's going to hold that extra half quart. So uh, we're going to get to filling it here next. Before that, though, I wanted to show you this guy. This is the uh, magnetic drain plug. It's very, very similar to a oil pan plug. It's going to go in the bottom right down here. It does have like a, a crush type washer uh, that somewhat seals, I guess, and uh, goes into there. 9 16 so basically you're going to have to bust out your standard uh, socket set because you use metric to take off the cover considering that you know this is a uh, metric era vehicle so I'm going to put that in there torque that down and then the next move is getting our uh, fluids going here so uh, we'll show you that next and we'll kind of kind of doing this uh, without knowing how much this is actually going to hold in here in the Impala. So uh, we'll see how much fluid it takes next. A um, couple things just very quickly. Be careful on these. You really can't see them. Uh, but these are gas tank shields I'm tapping on here. The heat shields. Those are really close to cutting your hand up. Um, that brake line cable across the top up there. That's another thing that could, you know, be a knuckle buster. Uh, but overall, very simple job to do. Uh, and you're going to have a nice, easy way to flush your fluids here with this PML pan. So, next up is fluids. Um, one thing I wanted to show, this is the uh, fill plug to threaded uh, Allen head right there. It is a different size Allen head than the bolts. So, do you wear that? Get your size all set up, ready to go beforehand. So as you're putting fluids in, you don't have a, a problem, you know, trying to scramble to get the uh, correct tool up there. It is a deep, deep hole in there. Um, it's threaded very far. Uh, I'm going to see how far this actually goes in. You know, it's. I don't think you need to crank it all the way in there. You just need to turn it in flush. So I'm going to have that sitting here handy. Next up, uh, the AC Delco limited slip axle additive. A lot of times uh, they, they sell a generic brand at AutoZone, those kind of places that's not Delco. Um, I forget the brand, but it's meant to fit all kinds of applications. A lot of people report problems with that, so I went to Amazon, bought two of these guys. Uh, you're only supposed to need one, but a lot of guys uh, running Impalas run two of these. Uh, it's, uh, each one's four ounces, so eight ounces total. And considering there is more fluid in here, I guess that kind of makes sense. So you have more uh, limited slip fluid floating around inside there. So we're going to go ahead and squeeze these in here and then uh, move on to the fluid next. Next up, fluid fill. I put uh, both little containers, the limited slip axle uh, additive. This does say limited slip. I don't think that really uh, does much of anything. It's just kind of uh, letting you know you can use it. Factory calls for this 80 W90 fluid. Just went with the castrol, nothing crazy. Just trying to get a basic uh, fluid in here. I'm not going synthetic or anything like that. Uh, so I have this quart. I'm going to have it standing by. The uh, quart I did get ready though, uh, right here I have, if you can see this, one of these guys on there. It doesn't make for a lengthy process, but it is much less messy. Um, so you're basically sitting here um, like you're pumping a bottle of soap from the uh, at the in the sink or something like that so you just sit here and start pumping away at it and I really don't know how much this takes I have a third quart sitting here ready to go but two for sure so this you just kind of pump 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 until you run out in here and then we'll move to the next one
So I'm at the point now that was roughly two quarts and then some with the uh, limited slip. I'm going to start pumping in this third one. And uh, I'm the kind of guy when I do this thing, any of these uh, fills, I don't usually do the pinky trick where you reach in. I just like to put in enough fluid until it comes kind of pouring out. And then I try to rush and put in the fi the fill plug. I guess I like a little excitement in my life. So here we go. I assume it'll be within this third quart. So here we go. Let's see how much more it takes. I think that's it. Yep. Fill plug started. moving everything out of the way getting this cleaned off give it a couple final pulls here just kind of got it somewhat tight there oh yeah it's got some more now this thing like I said you don't need to go crazy far in. If it keeps going here, I'm just going to put it in to the point of being flush. Seems like it's somewhat stopping though. Yeah, that's about it. You don't want to go crazy on this. This is just, yeah, that's it. That's just to make sure it doesn't leak. If you need to top it off, that's where you do it. Um, so, if it seems like I was struggling through that whole pumping process and doing that, it's not exactly easy. And on top of it, I'm laying on my side here uh, behind the camera trying to fit under here. So, that is it. I'm going to take the camera here and I want to show you somewhat, see if I can get you this angle right here. The side view of this thing. Now somewhat tricky to show you there um, the reason this takes so much fluid I'd say I haven't fully measured yet um, that's about two and a half quarts and then add in the limited slip additive so you're looking at two and a half and change um, if you did just fluid with one of these covers and uh, like I said two and a half with the limited slip additive uh, half quart overstock, so you know you have that much more cooling. Like I said, this is the PML deep cover for the GM10 bolt. Cover was included, fill plug, drain plug, all the bolts. We had did have to tell them exactly what bolts uh, fit our car, and they explained this on the website very, very clearly. Just because different cars, uh, you know, with this axle had different bolts, different lengths, things like that, and they send you bolts because. Your stock ones aren't, uh, they're long enough, but I, I didn't try them, but they give you longer ones that fit for the thicker flange on this cover. Use the gasket, uh, use gasket maker, and uh, two little bottles of GM limited slip, and then about two and a half quarts of the 80, 90 gear oil. Uh, you can buy this from PML, your covers .com. They sell a number of pans, good, good stuff though. We have uh, their transmission plan on our Trailblazer. Did a story on that a while back. Uh, they make valve covers for small block Chevy, I know. They make uh, diff covers, mostly American, uh, you know, domestic products for, you know, domestic cars. 
do have a couple imports uh, from what I saw but a really cool company uh, made in USA products looks cool really heavy duty it's not doesn't have the uh, bearing caps to tighten down or anything but as far as the extra cooling goes that's what's gonna matter on this so once again uh, this is the axle service from uh, hoagiesgarage.com uh, with the PML your covers rear diff uh, cover there so uh, thanks for watching hope this helped you out if you had any uh, other ways you do this that's cool too I know there's a number of ways people do this um, research your application before you do this make sure you get the right fluid the gaskets all that stuff uh, if you like it give us a thumbs up if you have any tips or suggestions or notice I did something wrong go ahead and chime in I'd love to hear your uh, opinions and your take on the whole thing Thanks again. Uh, have a great day, and we'll see you next time at hoagiesgarage.com.